Ritchie flat limits, Ritchie flat metrics, and collapsed limits. Thanks. Uh, well, thanks to the organizers uh, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. So I'm uh, going to talk about, as, as uh, Simon said, the Kähler Ritchie flow. I'll shorten that to um, KRF. Um, Ritchie flat metrics and and collapse and and uh, collapsing limits. And this is um, a, a joint work with uh, this is a joint work with uh, Valentino, who probably should be here, but <laughs> maybe he knows this well enough, and uh, and Xiao Kui Yang. Um, so just to give a, a, an outline of my talk, I'm going to begin with just a, a brief, brief back, uh, some, some brief background in the, the Kayla Ritchie flow. I'll just introduce it very quickly. And then I want to talk about um, collapsing. And there's two types of collapsing I'm going to talk about um, for the Kayla Ritchie flow, first of all. The first one is collapsing with, with bounded curvature. And this is something that was already known before. And the, the new, our new results are in the case of collapsing with unbounded curvature. Um, and uh, you'll see what I mean very shortly. And then I'm going to talk about uh, the Ricci flat metrics part. So I'm going to talk about collapsing Ricci flat metrics. And then, and then finally, I'll say something about the estimates. So this, this part of Ricci flat metrics will genuinely be on the topic of the conference, they'll genuinely be collapsing uh, kalabi yar manifolds. So um, first of all, the, the Kayla Ritchie flow um, is a flow of Kayla metrics on a Kayla manifold. I'm always going to be working with a compact Kayla manifold. I'll call it x. Omega naught will be the Kayla form of a Kayla metric. It's always going to be a, you know, a nice, smooth manifold. And uh, the kähler ritchie flow is, uh, is, a, is a family of Kähler metrics on x, omega t, satisfying this PDE. The DDT of omega is the, is the, is, is the ma negative of the Ritchie form, uh, with omega of 0 equal to, say, our given one omega naught. So this is the kähler ritchie flow. And here, of course, Ritchie of omega is the, it's, it's the, the closed 1, 1 form associated to the Ritchie curvature of the Kähler metric, um, G algebra, right, G for the Kähler metric associated to the form omega. And uh, well, one knows that there always exists a solution of this for some short time. And in fact, the solution to this will exist as long as the class, cohomology class of omega remains Kähler. Let me just mention a an old result in the case where the dimension of x is 1. And this goes back to a work of Hamilton. Um, and and uh, I want to consider two cases. Uh, first, the genus, the case of genus 1, you have a torus. In this case, um, there exists a solution for all time. And omega t will converge to some smooth kalometric omega infinity. And that will be smooth convergence. Uh, and, and omega infinity will be flat. So in particular, it's Ritchie curvature. So the Ritchie curvature form is 0. Um, on the other hand, in the case where you have genus, maybe I'll go over here. In the case where you have genus uh, strictly bigger than 1, um, then uh, what you see is that the, because, the, because the first churn class is, is going to be negative in this case, the volume of the, of the manifold will grow uh, and, and will tend to infinity as t tends to infinity. So we renormalize the flow. Um, and you can obtain this from a simple rescaling. Um, so we renormalize so the, the metric, the, the volume is constant. So we consider this, this flow instead. Again, starting at omega naught. Let me call this star. And this is 
we're mainly going to be working with this, this normalized flow. And then w Hamilton's result is that as t tends to infinity, omega of t, it, so it will, again, it, the flow will, the solution will exist for all time, and omega t will converge to a Kähler Einstein metric, in this case, a hyperbolic metric, which of omega infinity is, is negative infinity. OK, so this is a sort of class, uh, classical result. This is from the 80s. So uh, you, you, I want to now talk about the simplest case of collapsing with bounded curvature. Um, the simplest possible case is if you take a, um, you, you take a product of these two, two examples. Oh, I, I, should, I guess I should say, well, you might ask, well, what happens in the case gene is 0? For the case of a sphere, um, it will, this, the flow will actually shrink to a point in finite time. And if you do a different normalization, you'll get convergence to a constant curvature metric on the sphere. Um, and that's the result of Chow and Hamilton. But I, I'm not going to, spheres are not going to arise. Uh, and what I'm going to talk about. So, uh, so, so I want to talk about the case of collapse, collapsing with bounded curvature. And the model case is you, you just take x is, is, say, e cross b, where I take e to be my genus 1, my elliptic curve, and b is going to be my uh, genus bigger than 1. And with, and uh, I'm going to take, take, take a pi to be the projection onto, onto b. So I want to think of this manifold as being like an elliptic surface with base b and, and fibers e. So this is a uh, so, so projection, I wanted to say. Um, so, so of course, in, in this case, uh, so one has, say, omega b is now, say, is a, is a Kähler-Einstein metric on on B, so Ricci of omega B is minus omega B. And then um, if you started with omega naught, just the product metric, or I mean any product metric you like, then the Cayley Ricci flow will preserve that product. And then just by Hamilton's theorem, uh, you get that um, it's not, not difficult to see that, 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 that what, what will happen is that the metrics omega t, so if we look at the normalized flow star, so, so, so the picture I have is that I have this curve of high genus and of fibers, which are, it's all right. And under the unnormalized flow, the, the base is going to want to grow, and the fibers will stay the same in volume. But when I normalize, the base will keep the same volume, and the fibers will shrink. And what will happen is that omega t will converge to, to you'll, get, you'll get a hyperbolic metric on the base, omega b. So we get a convergence to the pullback of omega b smoothly. So, and, and, and one can also check that the curvature is bounded. So the curvature is, is, remains bound, is, is bounded along the flow. So this is a, a kind of model, model example. And um, I want to describe the uh, sort of what, what is known um, more generally in this case. So, um, so of course, we're interested in the case where you don't have a product metric. And of course, we want to also consider more general kinds of manifolds. Um, so this is a, a result that goes back to Song and Tian. And then the, the way I'm going to state it, I'm going to be using some results of Jan Song and myself, and also Frederick Fong and Joe Zhang, who used some results of Gross uh, Tosati and Yu Guang Zhang, and then uh, and Gil. So uh, what they proved is, is, uh, is as follows, that um, so again, let, let's, for simplicity, let's just take x to be e cross b, this pr product. Um, but let, now let's take um, omega naught to, be, to, to not, not be a product metric. Any, you could take any metric you like. 
and then later I'll explain how you can gen how this can be generalized. So what what is known? So um, so let omega t solve this normalized Kalevici flow star. So then as t goes to infinity, the following is known. So first of all, omega t will converge smoothly as t goes to infinity to this, this pullback of omega b. So just as, just as in this case. And secondly, um, if you take, uh, if you if you look in the fiber direction, so you take take your omega t, and you restrict to the fiber. Let's call the fiber x y. So I write x y as pi minus one of y, the fiber over y. Then we what we expect is that the metrics in this fiber direction are, are collapsing. So let's just rescale them so that they have volume one, say. Then this um, this will converge again, smoothly, as t goes to infinity, to um, what I'm going to call that this, so, so I'm going to call it this semi-Ritchie flat metric restricted to x, y. In this case, it's actually just, of course, it's just going to be a multiple of, of the Ritchie flat metric on E, of the flat metric on E. Um, so here, but, but in more, so this will come up later, so let me introduce it now. So this is the semi ritchie flat metric, so it's defined to be, so it has to be in the same cohomology class as omega naught, and it has the property, so rho is some, some real valued function, and it has to have the property that when you restrict the fiber, it's ritchie flat. In this case, it would just be flat. Um, so, so as I said, it's just going to be a multiple of, of the flat metric on E. Um, so, so, so you get this. Uh, so when you rescale the fibers, you get convergence to, to the flat metric on E. And then the third point, which let me, let me go here, number three, is uh, as I said, the, the curvature. So the whole point of this is that the curvature is bounded. And this, it's, it, although this is just a product manifold, this is, this is non-trivial to prove, even in the case of a, of a product of curves. And in fact, the, the argument can be very easily, um, it can be very easily extended to, to more general kinds of manifolds. So let me, so let me explain that now. So moreover, if, um, if, if x now is a holomorphic, Submersion. So, okay, so what do I mean by that? I really mean that I have a map pi from x to b as a holomorphic submersion over b with, uh, so now b is a, say, a m dimensional manifold with negative first churn class. So we'll generalize the case of the curve of high genus. And, um, and, and, uh, and, and here, this is a key point, and the, uh, the fibers, which are all smooth, so, so I'm not allowing singular fibers here, so this is a genuine submersion, and, and the fibers, x, y, are, are flat. So for example, they're tori. It could, could be high dimensional, but n dimensional, but, but they're not just Calabi Yao, they're actually flat. Then, um, then one and two hold, Um, if we if we replace um, this, if we replace the equation for this Einstein equation, so if we replace the equation, uh, uh, Ricci of omega b is minus omega b with what's called the twisted Kähler Einstein metric uh, equation. Sorry where you, you have this extra term, which is coming from the fact that locally, this is not necessarily a product. It's just a submersion. So you have this extra term, the Val-Peterson metric. Um, so if, just to explain this a little bit. Uh, so, if, so, if, so for example, if you had 
psi, psi y was a holomorphic and zero form. So you just say the fiber is just a torus, so you have some holomorphic and zero form. Then omega, uh, which for y and b, so this is on the fiber, this is on, on xy. Then omega, then, then, then the val peterson metric would just be given by minus dd bar log. Well, you're differentiating in the y direction, and then you would take the integral over xy of psi y wedge psi y bar, and then there's some factor of minus 1, root minus 1. Okay. So, um, so you get the, uh, as I said, you get the, you get the same conclusion, but the key, uh, sorry, you get 3 as well. Sorry, then, so, so 1, 2, and 3. You all, you get collapsing with bounded curvature um, as long as you have this key assumption, which is that the, f that the fibers admit a flat metric. Are there non-product examples? I believe so. Yes. B is compact. B is. Uh, well, I haven't thought about examples, but I, th I, I assume there are. I think that it is a bit. I think there are examples of Kodairo surfaces. Uh, I, I, I presume there are. I haven't thought about it, but I presume there are. I mean, it's true that we're actually more interested. There are many more examples, of course, if you allow singular fibers, and I'm going to talk about that, about that later. It's not that we have particular examples in mind. Uh, so... Um, Certainly, there are examples which are bundles. I mean, which are not product bundles. Um, so, okay. So, so, uh, so then, oh, uh, let me see. Another remark I wanted to make. Um, oh, let me let me just leave that. So, I want to. So, the main thing I want to talk about is the case of. So, I'm going to come back to the case where you allow singular fibers, and in fact, in this case, one can also say something. Well, something was known previously, too. But I'm going to come back to that later. Um, so I want to talk about the case of collapsing with unbounded curvature. Yeah, this is, this is the, yeah, so, so yeah. The, the, key, the key point is the assumption of flatness is going to imply the bounded curvature, flatness of the fibers. OK, so, so, so collapsing with, with unbounded curvature. So, so the point is that as soon as you allow the fibers to, to uh, be general Calabi-R manifold, you're not going to have bounded curvature in the collapsing. So the, the, the model case um, is going to be uh, e, e cross B, where E, is, uh, e, e now is going to be uh, calabi -Yau. So it's going to have C1 is 0. And let's say omega E is a Calabi R metric. It's a Ricci flat metric. And, um, and B is, is some, some, some uh, manifold with C1 negative, compact manifold with C1 negative. And let's say omega B has, has Ricci, uh, Ricci omega KE is. Oh, sorry, uh, omega b is minus omega b. Okay. Now, the point is that e, th this metric is, let, let's assume that the curvature of, of, of omega e is not 0. Okay. Right, so so you, you, th this Ricci flat metric is not going to be, not going to be flat. Um, then in that case, you could, you could start with omega naught being a product metric, any, any product of any metric on E and any metric on B, on B. Then, uh, then, then uh, if you look at, uh, again, we take this normalized Ricci flow, which I call star. Then, uh, as t goes to infinity, one can check that uh, that omega t will converge smoothly 
to um, the pullback of omega b as t goes to infinity. And, um, and, and moreover, the curvature of, 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 of omega t is, is, is it, the, the, at least the, the soup of this will go to, go to infinity. In fact, you could even just take, you know, take a simple product, start with omega e plus omega b, and you can just see that, that, that this would have to happen. The point is that the curvature is non-zero in the fiber, but because of the normalization, you're kind of dividing by e to the t, and then, uh, sorry, you're, you're multiplying by e to the t, and then the curvature will blow up. So, um, no, dividing by e to the t, I should say. You're shrinking the metric. which will blow up the curvature. So um, this is the model case. And let me, let me describe what we, what we know about it. So this is the, the main result I want to talk about. And as I said, it also the same techniques turn out to apply to the case of collapsing Ritchie flat metrics. So this is a joint work with Valentino, as I said, and, and, and Xiaokui Yang. And what we, so, so let me take, let me start with the case of, let me be more general and start with, again, a holomorphic submersion. So pi from x to b, a holomorphic submersion. Say c1 of b is negative, and the, uh, the, the, the fibers x, y have, C, have C1 zero. Um, and this is, say, of M plus N, and this is, say, at dimension, dimension M. This is a dimension N fiber. Then, uh, then as, then the, the flow exists for all time. That was already well known. And as T goes to infinity, we get the following. So we get that omega T minus this, uh, Omega b. Um, so just take the norm with respect to some fixed matrix at omega naught. This will tend to zero and, and exponentially fast. And here, um, omega b, omega b solves this twisted k the k, k equation. So this solves um, Ricci of omega b is minus omega b plus this Val Peterson metric. <laughs> yeah, OK, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm probably going to just ignore the pi star. Um, and then, um, and then two, uh, so this is actually strong. It's actually a little bit stronger because we get the exponential convergence, which previously wasn't known. And then, secondly, you get the same kind of result. So if you take this e to the t, um, omega t minus, so restricted to the fiber, minus omega semi Ricci flat, restricted to this fiber. So on the fiber, so again, let's, well, let's say omega naught. So on the fiber, this will be, again, 10 to 0 exponentially fast. So this has the same definition. This one just take. I, I just mean a uniform. So so soup. Uh, okay. So, so this is you know this one. Soup soup on the. On the fiber, but actually you could take the soup over. Y to be precise, you take the soup over y and b. So just take any. Yeah, just take any metric on the, any fixed metric on the fiber. So those ten, that tends to zero. Um, of course, you can, we cannot conclude this. We know that, in this case, the curvature will blow up. Um, one extra conclusion, which just follows immediately from these, is that you get convergence in the, in the gromov hausdorff sense to the base, which wasn't, which wasn't known before. OK. So let me, um, let me explain now what happens in the case where you, you have singular fibers. Um, so in this case, in that case, we uh, right. Let me go here. 
somewhere over. So let, 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 let's suppose, um, suppose more generally that we have a map pi from x to b, which is now a holomorphic fiber space. In other words, just a holom uh, holomorphic subjective map where b here is now going to be, um, so, 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 so b, let's take it to be any, any irreducible normal uh, projective variety of general type. So we allow a little bit more than, than C1 negative. And um, we, t we assume that the generic fiber is Calabi Yau. And then, um, and then if, you, if you define S to be the set of points on B, so the, take it to be the singular points of B, union the, the, the critical values of pi, so wherever it's bad, then, um, then, 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 X, then, then if you just restrict, so if you just work away from these bad points, you will get a submersion, so something that looks like this. So this is now going to be a holomorphic submersion. And then what we prove is that, um, that 1 and 2 hold on, on compact subsets of, um, of, of x minus pi inverse of s. So just as long as you work away from these singular fibers and away, right, away from these singular points of b, then it's fine. You get, you, get, you get all of these. You get this convergence. But we don't know what happens near the singular fiber. So that, that we still don't know. So let me make a couple of remarks about Not, yeah, not, well, I, I, right, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it should just be a consequence of, uh, of one, essentially. I think it should just be a consequence of one. I don't think it's anything more than that. It's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly a much weaker statement than, than me. Um, okay, I, actually, I should say, we, we get a little, just a little bit more in two, and so, so, so I should say this, in fact, we get just a little bit more. We get we get we get convergence um, in, uh, in 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 C alpha, where alpha is in between zero and one. So so we just get convergence in this in this Holder norm. Um, let, let me make a few remarks because in fact that part has already been improved. Some. Some remarks. So, so, so Valentino and, and Yu Guang showed that uh, that in fact um, two holds, the two holds uh, in in C infinity. So, in fact, you get smooth convergence on the fibers. Another remark to make is that this kind of setup is is quite general. So, um, so whenever whenever x is such that whenever whenever this this manifold has the property, so x are, I should say is smooth. I'm just right, any. So whenever this has the property. Um, Oh, so, so so let me let me say it this way. So if if um, if, you, if you take this manifold, if the Kalevich flow exists for all time, so the Kalevich flow exists for all time. This is equivalent to saying that the canonical bundle of X is Neff. 
And this is a well-known result. It sort of goes back to work of Cao and Suji and, and, and Tian and Zhou Zhang. Um, on the other hand, by, at least by, by, the, by the abundance conjecture, this means that there are three, well, it has to be semi-ample. And then uh, there are three possibilities. Either x is, 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 a, is minimal general type. So again, I'm assuming x is smooth. Here. Minimal general type. And in that case, we know that it's a, it's a result of Suji and Tian and Zhang that omega t will converge to, to a Kähler-Einstein metric, a singular Kähler-Einstein metric. Or uh, C1 of x is 0, in which case you can appeal to the older result of Tsao that the flow will, the unnormalized flow will converge to a Ricci flat metric. Or we have this map as above, you know, where, where this is of lower dimension. So, so, so these, these two cases are sort of more or less understood. And so this is, this is really the third case. And of course, a big open question is what, what is actually happening to the metric near the singular fibers. Um, uh, another remark to make is that there are some previous results. I should just mention briefly that um, so, so, so pre previous results, I won't state them, but just to just mention. So, so Song and Tian were the first to really consider this situation, and Fang and Zhang, uh, using some ideas, as I mentioned before, of Gross, Dosati, and, and Yu Guang Zhang, um, show, showed these kind of results in the case of where you have flat fibers. Song and Tian rather generally showed that you always get some weaker kind of convergence, but weren't, didn't get metric convergence. So weren't, weren't, couldn't show, show the metric convergence. The unnormalized Kähler-Ricci flow, you're this excess rule. So, uh, no, it, yeah, no, sorry, normalized. In fact, they're equivalent. Uh, it, yeah, if, if, if one exists full time, the other will, will also exist full time. Yeah. So, yeah, let me, let me show you. Right. Of course, the convergence at infinity is a different matter, but the existence full time. Different from the final case. So it's different from the Fano case, you know, the normalized. Which uh, oh, OK. Yeah, the Fano is different. Yeah, OK. Yeah. All right. Then I, I shouldn't, shouldn't have put the end there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, the Fano case is different. Well, you, could no, you would normalize it with a different one. And then, OK, let me say star. Let's see. Um, OK, so I want to talk now about uh, the Ricci flat metrics, which is really the topic of the conference. Um, so I, I so the similar setup because where you take um, I want to now take X so I want to again take a map pi from X to B. Uh, well let me let me let me rather say I have a map pi into so P, Pn in projective space. And, there's, and we have a hol holomorphic map. And then we have the image is B, which is a, a normal, again, norm, normal irreducible projective variety. And now let's assume that um, we, we assume that, that x is Kalabi Yao. It's Kalabi Yao. The map pi from x to b is this, again, this holomorphic fiber space. Um, the fibers now, again, will be, the fibers again will be Kalabi Yao's. Uh, the generic fibers, I should say, the generic fiber. And um, now the question is that if you if you let omega x be a, a, a be a Ricci flat metric, 
let omega x be a Ricci flat metric on, on x. So x is smooth, but we have this vibration which can have singular fibers. Um, and now, suppose I, I take some, some Ricci flat metric omega x, and then I take a path to the, to the boundary of the Kähler cone, and I'm assuming something rather specific about the, that boundary point. I'm going to, um, let's, let's write chi for the pullback of the Fubini studi metric on Pn. So this is now going to be a closed 1, 1 form on x. And it represents an element of the, you know, a, a specific ele element of the boundary of the Kähler cone. So here, this, this I'm going to assume has lower dimension. So n will be positive. The five is that right. So now, in, in this setup, uh, we want to ask the question. So let's write alpha t for chi plus e to the minus t omega x. And let omega t be an element of uh, alpha t. So alpha t is in the Kähler cone, but as t goes to infinity, it will tend to this boundary element, which represents the pullback of a metric from B. So now, um, now uh, the question is, what happens? What happens as t goes to infinity? OK, so, so this is the uh, collapsing case of Ricci flat metrics, where you're allowing the Kähler class to degenerate. And um, so more or less, what we obtain is, is, is similar to what we, what we obtained up there. So let, let me just say briefly, we don't get, it, it's slightly weaker what we obtain in that we don't get the exponential conversions. But um, so what we do, let me not go state the, all of that stuff again. But let's just say on compact subsets away from the singular fibers, away from the singular fibers, from the, from the singularities, let's say, then we have uh, that um, that omega t, this, this, oh, I didn't say that it was Ricci flat, right? Okay, omega t is, of course, Ricci flat. So instead of solving the parabolic PDE, satisfies this elliptic PDE, then omega t uh, will converge to omega b, or the pullback of omega b, where now omega b solves this. Ricci of omega b is uh, Val, Val Peterson metric. So there's no, uh, you don't have this extra term. So in the previous case, B was C1 negative in this case. It's not going to be. So, um, and so, so first of all, we have this. And secondly, oh, and this is, this is just uniformly on compact sets. And then, uh, and secondly, uh, if you take the e, e to the t omega t restricted to the fibers, this will converge to, to this semi ricci flat metric, which still makes sense. And this, again, uniformly in Y on compact subsets, uniformly in Y, you know, on, in, in, in a compact subset K. So we don't, we don't get the exponential conversions, but we do, uh, we do get this uniform conversions. And uh, so just to mention some previous, so of course, lots of people have worked on this kind of thing. So of course, there's the work of Gross and Wilson and who looked at the K, special case of K3 using very different techniques. And then you have work of Song Tian, who used these maximum principle type techniques. And then that was taken further by Valentino, and then uh, uh, Mark Gross, Tosati, and Zhang, and also Hein and Tosati. So there's, there's, there's various results under various assumptions, for example, assuming that the fibers are flat or making other kinds of assumptions or getting slightly weaker kind of notion, uh, uh, w weaker conversions. Okay. Um, right. 
So let me, let me say something about the estimates. Sorry? The ground, well, uh, what you can obtain is you can obtain something um, because you, you, you know in this setting that the diameter is bounded and the Ricci flat metric, so you do get a gram of Hausdorff limit, which is not necessarily unique. And uh, these estimates will, will tell you that at least there's some large part of that, which is a a uniqueness of omega b because it's if it's only defined away from the. Uh, it is a. Uh, it is, I believe, unique. Martinez, <laughs> <laughs> not. Surprising. It's surprising. Yes, could either ecology or product. It's a global thing. It's on the whole. Yeah. It's the weakest version. I guess right. I, yeah, I guess you have to probably use, use some pluripotential potential data to, to prove that it's unique in some. Do you have some. Do you have some kind of control. control. Yeah, let's see. You have some marginal pair equation, and you'll get some. You get some bounded potential. Bounded potential. Bounded potential. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, so let me say something about this. So, um, so, so let me, it's easier perhaps in, I want, I want to go to the easiest possible case, which is where our results are new, and that is, and that is the case where you have a product where, um, where e, e, e is going to have C1 of E is 0, and this is going to have C1 of E negative. And again, we take um, a Ricci flat metric on the fiber, and we take here a Kähler Einstein metric on the base. And we take omega naught to be not a product metric, but for simplicity, it doesn't make much difference to the argument. I'm just going to I'm going to assume that it's in the same cohomology class as the as the product. Okay, so it's the sort of simplest possible case. And um, and then you can you can write down reference metrics. So 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 if you actually just start at the product, what would you get? Um, if you looked at the solution to the Kähler Ricci flow, so I'm going back to the Kähler Ricci flow now. Um, this would be a, a reference metric, and it would be cohomologous to to omega t. And here I'm assuming that I assume that omega t solves solves this what I call star the Kähler Ricci flow. Okay. Okay. So I want to oops, explain the uh, the estimates we get uh, in, in the remaining time. So, um, so, so first, oh, so, so the goal, the goal then really is to show um, that omega minus the reference metric. So the, the reference metrics are what, as I said, what, that would be what you got if you started with the product metric. That this this tends to zero, so on on a, as t goes to infinity. So you're getting closer and closer to the reference metric, and in fact, it tends to zero exponentially fast. And then given this, everything will follow. Um, so the, there's three main steps. The first one is, so let me call this, as I've been saying before, dimension n and dimension n. Oh, sounds horrible. I don't think I want to move that board again. Okay. Uh, step one is that. Uh, if you take omega to the n plus m, so look at the volume form, the ratio of the volume forms, this tends to 1. 
as t goes to infinity. And if uh, this is true, exponentially fast. Uh, step two is we show that um, if you look at the trace of omega b, the metric on the base, with respect to the evolving metric omega, then this, of course, omega you're expecting to converge to omega b. So, um, so this you, you want to tend to 0. And in fact, you, you, you show that this uh, goes to 0 exponentially fast. Well, no, it's bounded above by something which goes to 0 exponentially fast. So e to some, some positive constant. And then, and then the, the third step is to show that um, you, get, you get some bound in the fiber direction. So if you were to take uh, omega e, probably I need to put an e to the minus t there, trace omega minus n, this is bounded by constant times e to the minus e to the t. And then if you just give it, given that we're done, because then if you add up um, step two and step three. So then you see that, so given this, then step two plus step three will, will imply that the trace of omega tilde is tending towards, from above at least, tending towards n plus n. And then step one, Uh, well, let me put it this way. Th this, this together with step one, just some sort of el elementary argument will tell you that, that, that omega will tend towards omega tilde. Right. The, the, the trace is bound in one direction, and the, the ratio of the, the determinants is bounded in both directions. So that's enough. OK, so, so um, So what I want to do then is, 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 is look at the, let's start with step one. Oh, well, before I do that, let me, let me, let me say the, uh, the key point, which, which is always the case. You want to rewrite this as a, as a Marjan pair type equation. So we want to, so we rewrite star as a as a Marjan pair type equation, pa parabolic Marjan pair type equation, which is the phi dt is log of omega tilde plus dd bar phi to the n plus m over omega tilde to the n plus m minus phi, uh, with phi is some some, some initial phi nor, which will be non-zero because I'm assuming you're not a product. And then, OK, so, so let me call that dagger, and let me just briefly explain why, why this is, because it's not, not completely obvious, why this is equivalent to this. So note that if, um, let me just do it here, so if, if phi solves dagger, and then, then just define omega t to be omega tilde plus d d bar phi, and um, and then um, and then you compute that d d t of omega will be d d t of omega tilde, but d d t of omega tilde is minus e to the minus t omega e. And then dd then dd bar of ddt of phi, which is dd bar of this, the dd bar of log of the volume form is the Ricci, or minus the Ricci. Then you get a minus dd bar of this guy, dd bar log of this guy. But this is Ricci flat, so you only pick up the Ricci curvature of omega b. And it has the opposite sign. It's going to be plus Ricci of omega b. And then you get a minus dd bar of phi. OK, so this is all, these terms are what you get from taking dd bar of d phi dt. 
and then you notice that this is minus omega b, and then this plus minus thi this plus this gives you omega tilde, and omega tilde mi plus dd bar phi is omega, so you get minus omega minus Ricci of omega. So, so indeed, it will satisfy this equation. And then conversely, you can prove it the other way around, too. OK, so, so, um, so, so we, we tend to work with this equation dagger instead of star. And so, so to prove proof of step one, well, the first claim is that uh, phi, in this rather simple setup, it's not always true, this estimate, but in this setup it is, that's bounded by constant e to the minus t. And the second is that phi dot is bounded by something a bit, a bit worse, but still fine, e to the constant times e to the minus t over 2. Just to, just to briefly explain one, in this case, you, it's very simple. You can do it in one line. If you, just, if you just consider q is e to the t phi, I just want to show that q is bounded. But look at dq dt. Um, I'm going to get e to the t phi plus e to the t phi dot. But then what you notice is that you have this phi here, which will cancel this one. So I'm just left with e to the t log of omega tilde plus dd bar. And then instead of phi, let me write e to the minus t q to the n plus m over omega tilde to the n plus m. And then what you notice is that at the maximum of q, so at the max of q, the, the, the complex Hessian is negative. So this will be negative, and then this will be less than this. So this whole thing will be less than 0, so this is less than 0. So that tells you that q is decreasing, maximum is decreasing. Similarly, the minimum is increasing, and so q is bounded. So q is bounded. So that's a, just a simple application of the maximum principle there. Um, number 2 actually follows from number 1 plus some extra arguments. Let me just skip that, since I'm running low on time. And then, so give, given the claim, step one follows. Because, uh, oh, I erased my crucial equation. OK, so the equation was that the phi dt is log of omega tilde plus dd bar phi <coughs> n plus m over omega tilde to the n plus m minus phi. And the point is that omega is omega tilde plus dd bar phi. That's my solution of the kähler ritchie flow. So given the claim, you see from here that omega to the n plus m, which is this denominator here, over omega tilde to the n plus m is just e to the phi dot plus phi. And then given the claim, this actually tends to 1, in fact, exponentially fast. So, so, so OK, I skipped, I skipped the proof of 2 there. Let me go on, just explain very briefly the proof of step 2. And then I'll, then I'll, I'll finish quickly. So it uses, it uses crucially, step 1. So the, the idea is, let's say, say rather briefly, so, the idea is you, you compute the following quantity, phi plus phi dot. And you see that you get this. You, you just do a computation. It takes a couple of lines, and you get this. Just, just compute it. This is actually the quantity we want to control. But then we also have something called the Schwartz lemma co computation. So this goes back to, to Yao. Um, this is a parabolic Schwartz lemma due to this was first written down by, by Song and Tian. And it tells you that if you compute this, this is actually just bounded in this setting. So this is called the Schwartz lemma computation. And then you just combine these two. So you, com you compute 
you then uh, you, you, you apply the maximum principle to the quantity that's called, again, q. You take e to the t over 4 times the quantity that you want to control. And then you add, you sorry, you subtract phi plus phi dot times e to the t over 2. And then the point is, from what we've already shown, this guy here is bounded. And then the idea is we, you show that q is bounded. And then that will, that will give you exactly what you want. You get this up about. So you, q is bounded from above. And you get exactly this. And, and that just follows some very simple computation. Just, just compute ddt minus the blessing of this. The only tricky term is when ddt minus the blessing lands on this trace, but we know, we know that's bounded. And so you get the q is bounded from above. And, and then since this is bounded, then, then you're done. And then, uh, and then step three, just to say very briefly, step, for step three, we use a what's so-called Calabi estimate, which tells you that you have a gradient bound for the metric. And that, unfortunately, it's not a very good gradient bound for the metric, because it actually is only bounded above by e to the t on the whole manifold. So it's, a, it's not, not, a, not a very good bound. But when you restrict to the fiber, it actually gives you quite a strong bound. It tells you that the derivative of the metric is, is actually bounded in the fiber direction. And then once you know the derivative of the metric is bounded in the fiber direction, it's enough to control something like the determinant in the, well, you can, you can just, for example, control the determinant in the fiber direction using the fact that you already have step one and step two, and, and, the, and, then, and then that's basically enough. OK, I'm out of time, so maybe I'll stop there. Thanks. Questions? Yeah. Is that a Calabi estimate which involves very heavy calculation? Uh, well, you know, it's something that sort of used to involve rather heavy computation, but now people know the right way to do it. And it's, sort of, it's actually just a few lines. It's not very, it's not very difficult. You, you, if you think about it as um, you compute the difference of Christoffel symbols, that's the, this is this was originally due to Fong, Sessom, and Sturm, and they they realized if you if you write down and write it down the right way, computation is actually just a few lines. The delta. Let me look at d, d v d by d t minus delta. That's the only the Laplacian of oh, yeah, the Laplacian of the evolving metric. Yeah. In your situation, do you know whether the smeared shiplet metric varies uh, in a positive way or you mean you mean the metric on the base, the omega? No, this so you have this similar Oh, 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 okay, which is, which is positive in the fiber directions. Is it positive in, yeah. in the base directions? Yeah. I don't think so, in general. There was a paper a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Same. Oh, the, oh, yeah? Semi-positive, yeah. Did it actually semi-positive? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, there you go. By Yong-Gun Choi. Yeah. Okay. You know, you take a Kelevich flow, right? So the left hand side, uh, I, 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 want to know, I want to know the limit of this. Uh, the limit of the TD omega. So uh, what happened, in other words, what, what? Must not be zero, you know? Yeah, you have, because this must tend to a minus weight patterns. But how you can get this? That, that's that's right, yeah. Um, because you know, uh, Hajime Tesuji, when he, he he wanted to work on ninety six, when you because you have two manifold, right? So you must have uh, some uh, uh, here. You have a Ricci flow. Uh, here you have a Ricci curvature, but you have, must have a 